Hi everyone, my name is Ollie Dove and at the end of 2020, beginning of 2021, I was fortunately named as one of the Inspiring Women in STEM award winners from Science in the Pub Tasmania. Now back at the beginning of 2021, I gave a talk at Science in the Pub, but this is just a re-recording to help with the audio a bit better. So I'll grab up my slides. So yes, my name is Ollie Dove and appropriately for my name, I study birds. So I'm actually doing a PhD in shearwaters and penguins, but we'll talk a bit more about them later on. So I'm a PhD candidate here at the Institute for Marine and Antarctic Studies, but I'm also part of a podcast called That's What I Call Science, which we'll also be hearing a bit more about later on. So how did I end up here? Um, from all the way from the UK, which you might have picked up on the accent. Well, ever since I was very small, I've always been in adoration of the animal kingdom. Absolutely love them. And it began with when I was two years old and I ran away from my parents at a farm and they found me having climbed in with the sheep and was hugging one of them. So my parents kind of always knew I was going to end up in zoology. But fast forward and I got to go on some really great trips in my late teen years. I got to go to Honduras to study biodiversity, got to go to South Africa to study animal behavior. And then later on, I ended up doing my master's project in Madagascar on plovers. But between the undergrad and being in Madagascar, I actually didn't think I would ever come back to university after my zoology degree. I studied up in Manchester and I really loved it. But my final year project was on science communication and it included writing a book on how a pigeon learned to fly, which is not the most usual last year project to do in a zoology science degree, but I loved it um, because I love creative writing and I really thought I'd be going directly into communication. But a few years on, and there was a master's course that opened up at Imperial College London, and but was based at the Natural History Museum, and it sounded fascinating on taxonomy and biodiversity. So I studied at the museum for a year, and I've got to say, passing a stegosaurus on the way to class is the coolest part of my academic career, hands down. But as part of my master's, I went to Madagascar to study plovers. And I always knew I wanted to work with animals, but it was there that I really realized that I loved studying bird behavior and I wanted to do more of it. So uh, after spending some time working for a bird charity, I ended up applying for a PhD. I knew I wanted to come to Australia because I studied abroad here when I was 19 and I was desperate to come back. I wanted to study birds and I wanted to be something sort of Antarctic related because I was inspired by one of my uni lectures that one day I would love to work in Antarctica. Now, my project isn't Antarctica related, but it checked off two of the three things in that I study birds here in Australia. So I investigate the effect of natural and anthropogenic influences on the behavior of seabirds. So anthropogenic is just a fancy word for sort of human. And I study little penguins and short-tailed shearwaters. Now, you may have heard of shearwaters because they're also called mutton birds here. And they have an incredible migration every year up past Japan. And then while they're here breeding, they go on two week trips down to Antarctica and back. So I got my Antarctic related PhD in the end. But these two species are so incredible because they actually live in colonies that overlap with one another. And when you see them in the field, it's it's hilarious watching the two of them, such different species interact with one another. I once saw a rental dispute between them where a shearwater came home and a penguin got angry because the shearwater actually lived below the penguin, but it had to pass the entrance to get into its apartment. And ugh, just good content, good times. So what I'm hoping to achieve in my PhD is to understand where they're feeding, understand the influences on their feeding behavior, and then provide conservation managers with this information. So I'm now a year and a half ahead.
ahead of where I was when I first gave this presentation. So having conducted all of my field work trips and now having all of my data, I can confirm I know where they're feeding, which is very exciting. The little penguins I study forage as a cohort and they always go to the same place south of my study site, which is Wedge Island near Nubina or Roaring Beach, if you know it, in the Tasman Peninsula. Whereas the shearwaters, because they're able to fly, they spread out a lot more up along the coastline of South Tassie. So I'm currently on steps two and three. So tune in next year when I submit my PhD to see what I found out. So my study site, Wedge Island. Hey, it is my home from home. I've been to Wedge six times now on trips that have ranged from two weeks to five weeks at a time. And across my PhD, I've spent six months on this island. Six months. I thought it's incredulous to think that I've been lucky enough to have six months of my PhD be fieldwork. Now, it's been full of a lot of logistic problems. We've had storms. We've had floods. We've had data problems. We've, oh, we've had all sorts of issues. But... By far, the fieldwork has been the best part of my PhD. It's been incredible. I love it. So what am I doing on Wedge? Well, on the left there, you can see me in front of a rainbow, but that's not all I do, just standing in front of rainbows. I'm also collecting tracking data. So what I do, I attach a little biologger to the backs of birds that I study. They take them out to sea and they collect several types of data. They collect location data. So that map up in the top right with all the colorful tracks, each track represents a different penguin going out to sea on a day trip. So I find out where they're going, but I also record the pressure and the accelerometry of um, their diving below water. So in the bottom right, those sort of, all those little jagged, lines on the top row, they're individual dives. And the bottom row are just four dives zoomed in. So I'm looking at those individual dives and trying to use um, a process on the computer where I can use tons and thousands and just sort of an overwhelming amount of data and be able to classify underwater behavior in a fairly simple way to help us understand what's happening and why is it happening. So it's not a classy job, but I love it. You may be like, why does she fall over all the time? Why is she just showing us these fieldwork photos of her on the ground? Well, little penguins and short-tailed shearwaters, shearwaters are burrowing seabirds. So they live underground. So I'm actually got my arm in because I'm trying to reach a bird at the time to be able to work with them. So yeah, you end up in some really elegant positions. Now, that was the work. And then we come on to the biggest challenge so far. And it's quite amusing for me that I've put so far because in the past year and a half, there have been other challenges in my PhD, but that's for a different presentation. So beginning of 2021, what was my biggest challenge? Well, in 2020, as you'll all fondly remember, we had a pandemic. Now, the photo of me on the left isn't me just being taken down by COVID. It's actually me in Coles Supermarket Santa Bay, where I had a seizure. I don't have epilepsy, never had a history of seizure, no history in their family. But I randomly, when I was buying food for a friend's birthday picnic, had a seizure. And I don't actually remember that photo being taken. My first memory after that amnesia hitting me was going into the MRI machine and being asked if Triple J was okay to listen to during the scan. But I had short-term amnesia for about half a day to the point where when a nurse came and brought me an iPad, they told me, oh, this is so you can talk to people because you're not allowed visitors. And I said, oh, why am I not allowed visitors? And she said, oh, because of COVID. And I said, what's COVID? So yeah, I had the whole, couldn't even remember the pandemic, which was something. 
And that's me talking to my cat, Chili, while I was in hospital and me in the ambulance. Um, and even though I don't remember taking that photo of my feet, apparently my instinct is always to take photos in an ambulance. So, um, yeah, so it wasn't a good time. Um, obviously being away from my family and being in lockdown and having to go through epilepsy testing while being separated from family and friends wasn't easy. Um, but I won't lie, it wasn't even nearly as bad as what happened in 2021 and 2022, 2022 especially. So come to my end of PhD lecture, and you might hear about that, but don't worry, I survived it all. And how did I survive it all? With my three main passions. So I love fiction, footy, and facts. So I mentioned at the beginning, I love creative writing, love, love, love. And so in my spare time, I write novels. I've just finished my third novel and I, Oh, waking up every day and have knowing that there's analysis in the world of academia waiting for me is not the most motivating thing I won't lie so I start my day by writing 500 words of fiction and just it puts me in such a good headspace to be able to enjoy the day after doing something that I truly love so I really recommend if you have if you don't think you have a creative passion I reckon you do because you can find creative creativity in any in so many things, even in sort of interior design or cooking, things that you don't necessarily think of as art. I reckon everyone has a creative passion inside of them. Um, and I really recommend trying to find out what yours is and just doing 15 minutes of it a day because oh, it can get you through some really rough patches. My other love is footy. Um, so I come from a rugby union background, having played at the University of Manchester, but there isn't 15s here for women, there's sevens, which I've dibble dabbled in, but I really wanted to play a big team sport again, so I took up AFL footy, and it has, oh, it's a chaotic game, but I love it, so I've been doing quite well in footy, and yeah, I think I'm the token Brit in the league, which is quite amusing because I've had um, an umpire after a game come up to me and be like, oh, you're the one that came from rugby, aren't you? And so it's like, oh, no, they know. And facts. So what do I mean by facts? I mean, that's what I call science. And how did I get involved in that's what I call science? Well, again, as I mentioned earlier, I've always been involved in SciComm. So Pitch the Pigeon there on the left, that's the book that I mentioned that I wrote, um, not one of the novels, but it was a short children's book that I wrote at the end of my undergraduate degree. Um, and I took it to a school and read it to kids and sort of engaged with them and how um, talked to them about how they found it, taking in scientific facts, through sort of a creative way, although I didn't phrase it like that. Um, and it was really, really fun. And the man behind me is my father, if anyone's wondering. But that image up on the top right is from a story even further back when I was 14 in a biology class. And we had to write a story about how the dinosaurs went extinct. And my teacher, uh, my biology teacher at the time, after she saw the, the little book I wrote, said, oh, you could make a career of this. And it's sort of the little comments like that that can really stay with you a whole lifetime. And I think part of the reason why I still enjoy creative writing is because of that very, very small, seemingly insignificant comment has always stayed with me. And then just on the bottom, it's just an example of an article because I've dibble dabbled in science journalism here and there. And not just in the writing form of Psycom, but I love making video blogs. So when I worked at Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary up in Brisbane for a few months, I made a video diary about the different animals they have there. And on the right, I also made a video series about when I was in Madagascar and the different flora and fauna out there because 
I love going on adventures and seeing animals and seeing the world, but I also really love being able to bring it back home with me and show the people in my life and further afield the adventures that I've had and just the wonderful creatures out there. So, Inspiring Women in STEM 2020 grant. What did I use it for? Well, there's a video on this fun slide to show. And that is me preparing for a wedge trip. So that is Wedge Island. That is our storage heart on wedge. And um, that is us in the gazebo on wedge. Oh, it's bringing back all the nostalgia. I only left a few weeks ago from my last trip, but wow, I already miss it. And there's my she orders. And now I'm just commentating the video rather than telling you what I did with the grant. So while the wedge footage plays, I basically made a series of videos about wedge. And I also made a series of videos about the birds here in Tasmania. And they were put together in a portfolio to send back to schools in the UK uh, via various teaching contacts that I had because back in 2021, the UK was still having a really rough time. I mean, they're still having a rough time, but they were having a rough time with COVID and there were a lot of uh, students that weren't really able to get out and see much anymore. And so after talking with different teaching friends that I have, I decided that I really wanted to put together um, footage from my time here to send to them, to give them something fun to do in an afternoon in class and to sort of spark zoology discussions. And they'll also discuss different topics of biological words and what they mean and things. And so this grant enabled me to purchase the materials I needed to film and put together those videos. Oh. And it also helped me with that's what I call science. So the same, this is us recording an episode for the podcast. So that's what I call science. It's a weekly radio and podcast show based here in Hobart, Tasmania, where each week we interview a different researcher or um, professional in STEM. So that's science, technology, engineering, maths, and medicine that's based here in Tasmania, because our aim is to display the wonderful work that is being done by researchers here and to sort of give STEM professionals a direct link to the public. Because as we know, misinformation is everywhere or a lack of distrust distrust in STEM and science professionals is sort of increasing. So being able to give them the platform to talk directly to people is really important to us that that's why I call science. And the, um, the camera that I bought with the grant, I also used to do for, and in the process of using for that's what I call science. And the team has actually undergone a shift in the last year and a half. So Last year, we had a gallery that we put on for Science Week. We created an online diversity gallery and I, using the things bought with this grant, um, I made a behind the scenes documentary about making the diversity gallery, which was shown at Geeker Street Festival, as well as up in the loop, if you know here at Hobart. That was really exciting. So we had some really, Cool things came out of this. So thank you, Science and the Club Tasmania. And thank you to everyone that's listened to me virtually. Thank you if you came to my original talk in 2021. I wonder if you did, you can spot any of the differences in my talk. But other than that, that's pretty much it from me from now. So this time next year, I'll be submitting my PhD. I'll be giving a final seminar here at IMAS. So come on down to the waterfront and hear how it went. Thanks.